except on the exam you're about to take. All right. This is where the lease is tied to some financial index, much like the ARM loan was. Remember on the ARM, the adjustable rate, it was tied to some financial index? They have leases that are tied to a financial index, like the consumer price index or the 10-year treasury note or whatever they want to define. I have never seen one. I have never seen the entire lease based on an index. All right. Thumbs up. All right, let me clarify one thing. Remember, we are in class. So try and keep the focus and the attention because I see a lot of deer in the headlight looks and I want to make sure you guys are keeping up with me. Okay. On page 336, there are some other leases I want to talk about that we have mentioned or touched on them a couple times. The first one being this thing, and I can't remember which one of you guys brought this up. It's called a ground lease. This is where the tenant or the owner of the building, the structure, they may own the building, but it's sitting on a leased property. They are leasing the ground. All right. They own the building. Remember the very first day we talked about airspace and I showed you a couple of examples like Simon owns the building, but they're leasing the ground it sits on. That would be a ground lease. White Castle does this a lot. What is the advantage to a commercial in the commercial world to a company leasing land? rather than owning it. There are two huge major advantages. Anybody want to shoot one out and take, care to take a guess? If they decide to move, they don't have to go through the hassle of selling it. Okay, so there may be three advantages. That's not one that I was thinking of, but that's potentially a good one. It is a financial trick, okay? Think of the Greenwood Park Mall, all right? All of those properties that lay on the fringe of the mall, Chili's, the movie theater, um, Jared's, they are leasing that land. What can you not do with your taxes and land. I said this briefly just one time. Remember, you cannot depreciate land. Very important. Matter of fact, I want you to write that down because this is a concept you need to understand in several different areas. In the cost approach yesterday with the appraisals, and we remember we figured straight line depreciation, what was the first thing we did in that section? We took the value of the land out and only talked about the structure, right? Because you cannot depreciate the value of land. You cannot write it off because it's always going to work more in the future. We tie in several different chapters, all right? So now think about Chili's, the restaurant Chili's. They own, if they own that land, and they spend a million dollars for it, they do not get to depreciate it because you, what? Cannot depreciate land. But if I'm renting it from somebody, guess what? That rental fee is now an expense and I get to write that off on my taxes. So Chili's could spend $10,000 a month on a loan to buy the land, which they can't write off because you can't depreciate land. Or they could pay $10,000 a month and rent the property from Simon. And now guess what they get to do with that monthly rent? 
they can write it off their taxes. So a lot of commercial companies love land leases because one, if they own it, it really does no good for them on the taxes. And two, it's an expense that they get to write off against active income, i.e. selling burgers. Plus, kind of what Christina was saying, if Chili's had to buy that piece of property, that's a million dollars gone. For what? Land. But I could use that million now and make better hamburgers or pay my people more or build a bigger building because I'm not buying the property. So a land lease has a lot of options for people, mainly in the fact that they get to expense the cost of the rent where they cannot deduct the or depreciate deduct the depreciation because you cannot depreciate land. In the subsurface, you could lease out oil and gas. You could lease out water rights. You could lease out your airspace. Billboards do this. The guy may own the grand, but the billboard stuck in the air he could lease the airspace to a billboard. You could lease to a cell phone tower. Now there's another option in here called a lease purchase. All right. We spoke several chapters ago about this thing called a lease with an option to buy. This is a lease with a contractual obligation already in place to purchase at the end of the lease. Notice these are two different things. One is a lease with the option to buy. One is a lease with the obligation to buy at the end of the lease. This is a little stronger offer to a seller than a lease option because the seller could always say, yes, but at the end of the lease, they may not buy my property and I'm back in the same boat trying to sell my property. Why would I want a lease option? And you would say, okay, how about this? How about we lease it? And at the end of the lease, we will buy it Guaranteed, it's contractually obligated. That is called a lease purchase. I've used it twice. And it worked both times successfully. And it worked in the same situation of a couple getting a divorce. And in the big case, the wife was my client, the husband maintained the residence, the wife, who was the big breadwinner, decided to buy another house. The problem with that is what? She cannot buy a house while she's married because the husband would own half of it. Even if you're arguing and in the process of getting divorced, in the eyes of the law, you're still married. So she could not buy a property because of tenants by the entirety. That husband may have had a claim to his right to that property. So what we did is we went to the seller and said, look, here's what we got. We've got a problem here. So here's what my client wants to do. She wants to lease the property from you until her divorce becomes final and then she'll buy it from you. But we can't buy it today. Everybody get where I'm going with this? A lease, she just leased it. And in our lease, it was an at-will lease, by the way, because the lease said within 45 days after the finalization of her divorce, she would take title to the property 
in, in as a purchase. So it ended at her divorce ended in about six months. We bought the property eight months later. But he did not want an option because in an option, the tenant has the right to say no, it's an option. This was she was wanted to buy it and we told him we wanted to buy it with a lease purchase, but just didn't buy it now. Okay. Now, the next thing in your book really should have gone, in my opinion, right below the land lease. And we've touched on this before. This is the next evolution. The first evolution is the landlord owns the lease or owns the land and the company owns the building. It is entirely possible that the company sell everything to a landlord and then turn around and lease the entire thing back under a sale lease back. Now they get to write off all of the monthly costs for the land and the building. This is typically more common than just the land lease. And these are your big CVSs, uh, Walgreens. Like I said, Home Depot does this. You could go in, buy a Home Depot, 15 million. They'll lease it back from you for 30 years. And they pay like $15,000 a month or something like that. So this is really just for Cameron? people who I was gonna say this is like really for companies who have like most of their uh like merchandise leverage. It, it's mainly for an accounting issue that allows them to show no long-term debt to the company, which makes a really good financial statement on publicly traded companies. Uh, That's how I see this. All right. You get like Dollar Tree is a good example. Dollar Tree stock is pretty strong. When you look at their financial statement, they have no long-term debt because everything is a lease that goes on their balance sheet and they expense it every year. So it makes their company look financially strong because there's no long-term debt on their books. Okay, so that's the sale lease back. So if you were looking at it kind of like an evolution, the first might be the land lease where they lease just the land. Then the sale lease back is now they're leasing the land and the building the entire process. And we talked about Yum, you know, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Pizza Hut, uh, A and W. They don't own any of it. All they own is the actual. I don't even know how to describe it, the franchise concept. The building is actually owned by other people. The investor owns the Kentucky Fried Chicken building. Yum owns the franchise and they operate the franchise in that building. And they pay monthly rent to Joe in the form of like $8,000 a month. But he paid like, $950,000 to buy that building. Marsh was a triple net lease. They did not own that Marsh building that we just talked about. An investor owned it and they rented back. And they rented at what, that 11,833 plus 4% of anything over a million in groceries. Even though everybody drive by and go, look, there's Marsh, oh yeah, I know where the Marsh is. Let's go to the Marsh. Marsh didn't own the building. An investor sitting in Canada owned the building because they are a sale lease back. They sold the building. They had it built and then sold it to the guy's name. Lived in Canada and his name was Heinz Kuhn. H-U-H-N. All right. Now, a lease eventually will get discharged. And when it gets discharged, hopefully for you guys, the most common way is completion. We started a lease. 
we ended the lease, 